as you might notice taking the easy route a couple of these juk 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 it's a little too cheesy I know but Chugs need love too anyways welcome guys Sandu hold on There it is, hello! Oh shit, I don't even have a white pick. That's a mistake. What the hell? I don't have any white picks left. Ha! What's up everyone? Welcome to Sun with Ola 137. Holy shit, guys. Uh, I know I cheesed out a little bit on the intro there. You know, the, the chugs... The simple chugs need love too. You have to give them some love. So I okay. Okay, I forgot about that. That was the first riff I wrote for the Swola. It's a little, it was a little bit too much Dream Theater, in my opinion. You know, when Dream Theater gets a 7 string and they make a song, that... I thought it was a little bit too cheesy. So I reverted back to the simple chugginess, you know. All bands in the world have done that thing. Jung, 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 jung. So it was my turn, okay? Dude, hello! How are you guys doing? Holy shit, welcome to Sun with Ola 137. Holy shit, we have a new guitar today, the XF 1.7 FBB. Look at that, it's a plus two. It's FB, sorry. So it's one of our flat X's right there, and it sports on every tune bridge, it's a seven string, and uh, look at the mahogany backside right there, like, like that. How cool is that? Okay. If you were in the Sunday with Ola Contender livestream last time, you might have noticed that I experimented a little bit with uh, giveaways through Streamlabs. Hmm, you know, huh? Well, I decided to bring in something more engaging into the Sunday with Ola's, where now, if you're a part of the premiere, you're chatting away right now, hello, you can be a part of a raffle, okay? And you can win a t-shirt, one of these, a Chug Life t-shirt. So if you're in the premiere chat right now, right? exclamation mark, raffle, and you're automatically in the raffle. And at the end of the Swola, I will announce a winner in the chat, okay? How cool is that? So, you know, making it a little bit more engaging. A, you know, a little small thank you to the guys that are staying up late to watch the Sunday with Ola live, or the people that go up really early on a Sunday morning to watch it live too. So, you know, a little engaging. Exclamation mark, raffle, okay? Oh, yes! Speaking about Dream Theater, going back, you know John Petrucci, that incredible guitar player god guy that's in Dream Theater. If you watched the Coffee with Ola interview with John Petrucci, you might have noticed that he invited me to his John Petrucci Universe camp in August on the spot. And you know, he, it took me by surprise and uh, you know, I didn't know what, what to expect or answer. But I answered yes, so I'm going there now in August to John Petrucci Universe. It's basically four days of guitar playing, beach, uh, sex. Maybe not sex, but uh, food and you know, John Petrucci will be there, Sack Wild is gonna be there, you know, uh, the guy, Tim Henson, and like Aaron Marshall and can, uh, uh, Guthrie Golden. I mean, holy shit. And then there's gonna be me. <laughs> you know, this guy. 
uh, among all of these amazing shredders. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. I I'm looking forward to it. I'm taking Luis, we're gonna go there. I'm gonna be a part of the student experience. But we're also working out the details. Maybe I'll do a little seminar or something like that. Uh, that people can go to as well. So we'll, we just have to see about that. If you want to be a part of John Petrucci's Guitar Universe, I'll put a link down there, okay? And maybe I'll see you there. How about that? Dan News. In today's news, ESP finally makes it official that Mick Thompson of Slipknot is one of their artists. The rumors went around when they, everyone saw that Mick Thompson was playing an ESP guitar a couple, of, you know, a month back or so. And people were like, ah! Is he switching again? Yes, he is switching again. <laughs> they are confirming that a new ESP LTD signature model is on the way. Former Jackson player Thompson is also rumored to have joined Fishman. He was playing EMGs for a while and he had, you know, the empty set, man. The empties were great. Uh, he's joining Fishman pickups now, so that's kind of big. ESP has officially welcomed Mick Thompson to its roster of signature artists in a move to see Slipknot's electric guitar star leave Jackson. Mick is one of the most respected and influential players in the world of metal guitar. The intensity of this aggressive playing style will, uh, with Slipknot fits perfectly with the energy at ESP. I completely agree. I mean, it's one of those brands that's like, you know, they do metal. Mick Thompson fits. <laughs> coffee break, everyone. Do you have your coffee? If it's late Saturday, you can put some whiskey in your coffee. You know, it'll make you stay up. Might make other things stay up too, you know? <laughs> Alright, Guitar World is issuing a new... Guitar World has a new issue of... Guitar World, the magazine! Wow. 10 out of 10 English. And it sports Sackwild on the cover of the issue. Inside Sackwild's heartfelt celebration of Pantera's Dimebag Daryl only in the new Guitar World. As a Pantera fan, obviously, you know, this sparks my interest. Uh, in our July issue, we take you deep inside Pantera's World Tour, a tour that finds Black Label Society Sackwild filling in for his friend, the late great Dimebag Daryl, who left us nearly 20 years ago. Shit, man, that's been 20 years. In two exclusive in-depth interviews, one by John Wiederhorn and one by Nick Bocott, who worked with both Sack and Dime on their respective Guitar World columns back in the day, Sack explained how he learned Dime, Dime's guitar parts, the gear he's using on tour, and the deep emotional aspect of the whole shebang. On top of that, we chat with Ola England, the guitarist on YouTube, and Zach watch to help him nail some Dime solos! Ah. And you can see that I've already clicked this. <laughs> because it's pink and it's not like a, a red link. This has been clicked, so, you know, I, I knew this before. Let's click, what happens? Oh, they okay. They linked another article with me in it. Okay, uh, that makes sense. So that so that's pretty nice. I'm in the new guitar world. It's not you know me being featured. I'm just there in a little corner saying, hey, you know, I like Psych Wild. I like Dime Bag. Oh, that's me in the newest uh, guitar world. <laughs> you can get it and read it. Okay, like it's 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 an absolute honor to even be mentioned with these names, man. That's. Can't imagine that ever, man. And with that, Sack Wild used a Guitar World's buyer's guide to help him assemble his Pantera rig. Black Label Society Titan stumbled on Guitar World's advice while searching for the one pedal he needed to harness Dimebag Daryl's sound and said he wouldn't be able to get through the Pantera show without it. Hmm, I wonder what pedal that is. It's gonna be a whammy, right? That's what I figured. Last year, Pantera announced that he'd be returning on stage for an extensive tour with the help of Sack Wild. Uh, that pedal was a noise kit. Oh! Okay, it wasn't a whammy, it was a noise gate. Okay. Good on you, man. Elocron. He's been doing well lately. I think it might be because I actually set it up, you know? Yeah, but no issues, what? Huh? Huh? Good on you, Elocron. I, I kind of love you again now. Look at him. Look at him go. <laughs> he admitted he had to obtain one for the first time in order to tame Dimex's penchant for high gain sounds. Okay, shit. I had to get a digital whammy pedal. Okay, there it is. I called it. He needed to get a whammy pedal for becoming. I'm now a proud owner of one of these. And I had to get noise gates too because I don't use them, he went on. I just googled best noise gates and the Dunlop one came up so I bought a couple. This is basically like an ad for the smart gate right here. Ah, uh, I'm not gonna fall for it. Where do I buy one? <laughs> shit, give me a link. Thank the good lord and John Paul II for those noise skates, though. <laughs> Without those bad boys, I wouldn't be able to get through the Pantera show. I'd be tap dancing on my pedal board like I was in Riverdance. Switch my OD pedal on and off all the time. Okay, so he basically tamed his own noise by shutting on and off his overdrive that would, you know, feed the distorted channel on his amplifier. And, you know, usually a lot of tube amplifiers and 
solves that amplifier. They're pretty clean, actually. It's when you start adding more and more gain, it just amplifies the noise. So, uh, just turning off an overdrive usually helps. And with that, we're also gonna watch Pantera play their first US show. And the Charlotte Benante shares drum cam footage from Pantera's first US show. I said that already. Dude shreds. Okay. He's not playing it right. He played it like I did when I just learned the song and I watched him tabs when he played, you know, like this. This is how he played it. So he was playing it. Which is wrong. It, it feels too happy. It's. That's how you play it. Maybe, you know, he's on the first song, it's Adrenaline Man. And I have only one month left until I get to watch Pantera in Hamburg. I'm gonna go to Hamburg and watch him. And I'm also gonna eat a lot of hamburgers there, because it's Hamburg. In Flames vocalist calls for bands to fight together against merch cuts. Everyone has to react, it can't just be a few bands that say something. Okay. The topic of merch cuts when a venue takes a percentage of a band's income from sale of their own merchandise has been a hot topic in the past year. Igor refused to sell their merch at a UK venue due to the cuts, while Monuments did the same in Greece as did Russian circles in France. So, yes, uh, I've been talking about this as well. It seems that it has been a bigger problem now after the pandemic than before. So I, I knew this was happening before the pandemic as well, but not to the extent that it's happening today. Now, Anders Fridén has weighed in during an interview with the Metal Circus, uh, saying that everyone has to band together against the cuts in order for something to happen. Fridén also re reasons that the cuts were original there to ensure that the venue didn't lose money on bands but have since become a source of income instead. For bands that are relying on merch sales, it's really, really tough. You know, and Flames are a huge band. They draw a huge crowd and they can, you know, they, they will get paid for their shows. But, you know, all of these supporting acts that are also going, for them, the margins are really, really small and they need to sell merch to be able to profit from a tour. So in that sense, it doesn't hurt the bigger bands uh, as much as the smaller bands. So, you know, it's really important that we get rid of this for the smaller bands. I mean, we sell a fair amount of merch and the money that goes to someone else, even though we sell it ourselves sometimes, it's crazy, it's insane. But it's way tougher for smaller bands that live solely from merch. They have to get the merch money to pay gas to get the next venue or to pay so that they can maybe sleep in a motel or get some food or whatever. And then someone just comes and takes 20 percent out of their pocket it's horrendous i completely agree so what can we as an audience do i mean in inflames case i think it's pretty simple if they will be able to make their tour shirts available online from their own shop for instance you know people could go and buy t-shirts from there obviously it's not going to be as exclusive as going to the show and get uh, a t-shirt but maybe they can make shit available on their website. That should be the absolute best and direct way of supporting a band is just go to their website and, you know, the money goes straight to them. In their case, it's probably going straight to the label, but at, at the end of the day, the label takes a cut anyways. You know, we have to find other ways to support the artists, okay? Go buy their CDs and vinyls and merch and all that, okay? Let's start there and let's just hope that uh, this thing ends quickly. Corey Taylor! He's the singer of Slipknot. He streams angsty new love song. Okay, it's a love song. Shit. Beyond. Oh, rock and roll, baby. Alright, it's not really my type of style. It's uh, Well, uh, you know, it's good for him. It might not be uh, completely up my alley, but, you know, good for him. I think it's uh, smart of him of doing his own solo career, you know. He's, uh, he's making sure his name stays in the books for the future, man. But what does Corey Taylor think? About the new Corey Taylor singer, that's what I wonder. This last piece of news goes straight into the depths of my heart because it's regarding one of my uh, entry-level bands, I would say, that, that took me from grunge to metal and that band was Tad. And Tad Doyle, the, the guy behind Tad, uh, says that Tad will never reunite, it will ruin the legacy that we created for ourselves. <laughs> that sucks ass. No, I think we're done. I get a lot of people asking how about a reunion and all that and I don't think my heart and soul is in this space anymore. It will kind of ruin the legacy that we created for ourselves, that's all. 
a very healthy way of, of, of looking at things for sure and you know kudos to that but for me as a fan you know it makes me a little bit sad you know Tad uh, as I said earlier when I was starting listening to music for real and I you know I started listening to punk and grunge and all that Tad and Melvin's for instance well, and even Soundgarden to uh, some extent or Alice in Chains for some extent they were the bands that kind of you know led me more and more towards the metal aspect I mean let's listen listen to Tad man if you haven't checked out Tad listen to Tad go check out Infrared Riding Hood right here listen to this I mean, it sounds like grunge, but it's heavy as fuck, okay? My guess is that, you know, a lot of my viewers have absolutely no idea who Tad is as a band, but you should go check it out. Check out this album, man. Infrared Riding Hood. It's really, really good. 1995, baby. Just swinging back in time a little bit. And that, my friends, was the news. Hello. Who's up there? You won't escape that way. All right, do you guys remember the burnt solar guitar? A guy in Finland got his whole home burnt down uh, earlier this year and a couple of weeks back he shared a picture of a solar guitar being burnt to hell and back. Even though the guy stated that the solar guitar actually fared very well uh, compared to his other guitars that was just burnt to ashes. Well, I contacted the guy and I actually shipped him a new solar guitar in exchange of the burnt one and uh, you know, I would do something with the burnt one. I'm not sure exactly what. It arrived, so I'm gonna open it up. Also, I got a message from a firefighter in the US uh, that warned me about opening this package that I should do it outside and with gloves and masks and whatnot because of, you know, there could be a lot of toxic shit on this guitar. So I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> but I do really appreciate the concern right there. I don't think it's gonna be that bad, but I'm gonna be in this office right now. I'm gonna open the window. I'm gonna go get some gloves, okay? Alright, gonna open the window real quick. There you go, gloves on. Alright, there's a note. It says, Hi Ola, huge thank you again. Hope you'll have a good time going through the guitar and maybe make a fun video about it. Keep on making kick-ass guitars and videos for us. Villa. Very nice little message. And now I can smell the burn. Oh shit. Okay, take a look at this. Holy crap. Holy shit. I want to be slight, slight careful with this. Take a look at that. Oh my goodness, holy shit. Look at how that Evertune bridge held up, man. Dude, that gives off such an eerie feeling for me right now. That's... Strings are on even. And he told me, Villa told me that the G-string is basically still in tune. The Evertune works, man. <laughs> you can still see the inlay right there. You can still see the Solar logo somehow right there. And this is probably something else that's on the strings right there from, you know, the rest of the home that burnt down. Oh shit, there's still a cable inside. What? Look at that. Holy shit. I mean, it's still stuck there, but yeah. Dude, how f cool is that? He had it plugged in and all, you know? God damn. But yeah, this is giving off such an eerie feeling, man, looking at this thing. So the plan for me was, you know, maybe I could do something with this guitar, you know, maybe I can do a test of this burnt guitar, but I also feel that I don't want to disrespect the guitar. I mean, this guitar was a part of a very big tragedy for Villa and, uh, you know, his girlfriend. I don't want to mess too much with it, you know, so my plan was to put it in framing 
and uh, you know put it somewhere around here so that could be pretty cool that's way too cool man I don't know what to say all right, album tips, and this is gonna probably clash with a lot of you guys out there because, you know, it's very important to be very true to death metal and metal. So I checked out a new band called Lucifer. <laughs> no, but I got a press release in regards to this band. It's actually a band that's been it's existed since uh, 2014. They have a new single and album coming, and, uh, you know, what sparked my interest a little bit is that Nicky Anderson, you know, one of the brainchilds of Entombed, is the drummer of this project, so I figured like, you know, I should give this a, a, a fair chance. And uh, obviously it's not... I would probably draw a little bit of comparison to Ghost in this case. I think it's really cool, man. I, is this me getting old or do I start enjoying shit like this? I don't know. I, yeah, what I think, it's, it's just really tasty, you know, hard rock. I'm probably gonna get shit for featuring a band called Lucifer in this show. I actually had a guy, he said like, he subscribed one day and then the next day he unsubscribed because he said like, why are you talking about this uh, upside down cross shit, you know, that you have on your sweater or something like that. It, you know, or why are you wearing the satanic uh, symbol on your chest? It's fucking Elden Ring, man. It's a game. Will someone unsubscribe because I talk about a band that's, that's named Lucifer? I had a fucking amplifier called the Randall Satan, man. It's just a name. Get over yourselves, okay? Anyways, Lucifer, a coffin has no silver lining. It's a sick song. Let's go. Welcome to Ola testing shit in Swola. Remember when I said that I felt bad for not testing a bunch of the stuff that I have out there? It's been taking too long. That's also including plugins. And you know, I don't want to come off as being, oh, you know, Ola, important person, just pe people send me stuff and, and links, and you know, I just sit there like, oh, well, 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 well. No, it's just that I'm incredibly lazy and busy at the same time. It has nothing to do about me being important or anything like that. It's just that I have so little time. That's why this segment is so good that I take out something for a swola because, you know, killing two birds in one strike with my master sword. So, one thing that has been waiting for me, Ola last on the ball, England, as I call myself, is the new Dino Casares plugin, the Disruptor. It's from Joey Sturgis Tones, Tone Forge, and I feel really bad about this one because I ghosted them a little bit. Uh, that's just how, it, you know, that happens. I'm very incredibly sorry, I'm only human. That's why I have like Louise take care of all of this for me because, you know, I, I just can't handle myself anymore. So I'm gonna make this quick little demo of this plugin. Let's just check it out, man. It's time. So here it is. It looks kind of cool. I'm using this solar guitar, by the way. It's an AB 2.7 uh, ETFBB. You know, it's Dino Casares, man. You need to have a seven string. All right, let's just check it out. Let me roll through a couple of presets and then we'll look at uh, a slight bit into the plugin, okay? Dino Casares. Let's go. Aggression. <laughs> Dude, that does sound like Fear Factory for sure. Unfortunately, I don't have as tight of a right hand as Dino, but... I can pretend. Ibanez made a video with all their 7-string artists, you know, like Korn, Steve I, uh, also Dino, and uh, it was funny because there was a segment where Dino's like, you know, I like to play stuff that comes from the heart. Stuff like this. <laughs> and I always thought that was really funny because, you know, that's the most brutal f ever. Dude, that sounds pretty good, man. So we have, what's this, like pre-pedals, amplifier. Look how modern it looks, man. And then we have cabinet section, pedal section, and uh, post-EQ. Autonomous dynamic system. Oh, shit, I knew it. Terminators are taking over the world. <laughs> Damn, man, that's pretty cool. 
So something uh, that... That needs a gate. There it is. Something that caught my eyes is this. There's something called the iMatch, which I guess... Okay. You can load in different profiles of uh, a DI signal, like a guitar DI. So basically, I can capture this guitar, and it will compensate the difference between this DI uh, that I'm recording right here and Dino Casares' seven string. So it can match it to sound like Dino's guitars, for instance. I'm just capturing to see what happens. All right, here you can see the difference. Like, this is an Omico pickup right here. So it doesn't have, you know, super high end in its pickup. So you can basically see the difference here between my pickup and the one uh, that uh, Dino is using. Then you have a cabinet section where you can blend. Okay, external IR, let's do it. Yeah, man, that sounds good. So this is the replica tone right here. Let's turn up the gate a little bit. Dude, I think this sounds pretty f sick, to be honest. I think it delivers exactly what to expect. I mean... Fear Factory is just a distinct type of, you know, really staccato type of metal tone right there. And this basically has all the album tones on it from Fear Factory. It's more towards the mix-ready style guitar plugin, other than what the others are doing where they're having like, a, you know, real amplifier cabinet and uh, modulating like a raw tone uh, that's not being mixed. This is mixed ready to go. You know, if you really just want to have the quick Dino Casares sound right there. Shit! Man, holy shit! That's my quick little demo for you. Back to Ola. Ha! Ah, right there! Fear Factor, Disruptor. If you want to see a longer video of me demoing this uh, plugin, go to my second channel. It's up here. You can click there and you can click the video. How about that? Ola England. All right, that's it for Sunday with Ola 137 for you right there. I'm stopping the raffle right now. Who won? If you won, send us an email through olanglandshop.com and you'll get a code where you can make a purchase and you get a free t-shirt how about that how engaging man do you guys feel engaged <laughs> tomorrow on my old england channel number two i have a live stream of the swola contenders don't miss on on this okay if you want to be a part of it, there's a link down in the description on how to be a part of the Sunday with Ola Riff Challenge. You can use the drums from, you know, this intro that I had in this video, for instance, to make your own riffs. Thank you so much for tuning in on a Sunday. Uh, go hug someone, send some love to, to whoever. I mean, there, there, we need to get more love out there, man. There's just so much negativity in the world. We need to love more, okay? Can we all agree on that? Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.